What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I've got another very important AMC update to bring all of you this evening. So what we're going to be covering in this update is a little bit of the short interest and utilization updates on Ortex that we are getting for AMC and GME today. Um, and then we're going to be going over one of these problems that the shorts are starting to create. This is a problem that we have seen for the shorts that has happened every single time we have gone on a massive run in the past and we are starting to see the signs of this type of phenomenon happening yet again due to that utilization increase the new data that we are seeing and honestly the over shorting of these two stocks over the last couple of weeks and months now in addition to this we are going to take a brief look at the options chain and take a look at some of the institutional ownership percentage changes for amc over the last quarter now I know when we talk about uh, institutional ownership percentage changes, everybody is going to jump right to the thought of, well, they're just buying the shares to loan them out. Again, I've explained this a lot in the past, but if you are buying shares for the sole purpose of lo loaning them out, you would do something like that on a stock like BBIG that has a 200, 300% cost to borrow. You wouldn't really want to do it on AMC right now that is showing an average cost to borrow of about 1.5 to 1.6%. But that part party is kind of over even if we were to see these institutions doing that which i'm going to go over with you in this video now the key part of these institutional ownership percentage changes is one institution that we're going to be talking about renaissance technologies remember when i look at institutions i look at the big boys blackrock and vanguard to see what they've done with their position but then we have renaissance the most successful hedge fund of all time and in addition they don't really have that much of an interest in just buying stocks to just loan them out because, well, if the stock is going to go down more than the cost of borrow, they are going to lose money. So before we get into all of that information, if you enjoy the information and analysis that I provide for you in this video, make sure you go down and hit that like button. It costs you nothing to do it, but it really helps us out a whole lot in getting this information out to as many people who want to learn. And if you guys want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new video. And again, guys, if you do want to learn about the 1348 strategy, make sure you check out that link down below to the free part of the Discord make sure you learn the strategy before you consider learning premium it's a really strong strategy that i think you guys really should take a look at we're using it every day on the stream you guys see um, how effective it is and i want you guys to be able to understand it too if you don't want to join premium that's fine but just learn the strategy so you have it in your toolbox so amc closed the day today at 17 dollars 75 down about 5.64 percent we had a lot of war tensions kind of starting to heat up today and the market had another pretty volatile day and today amc wasn't really able to kind of disjoint from the overall market like it was doing last friday now when we come over to the ortex data over here we've got a hundred percent utilization on amc sort of we're going to go over that a little bit right here we have 1.62 percent average cost to borrow but a maximum cost to borrow of 3.54 percent uh we have 21.81 percent estimated short interest 4 million shares borrowed today 1.4 million returned with a net borrow of 2.63 million shares now if we were at 100% utilization, it's possible that they could return shares, then they go out on loan right away. And with Ortex getting their data from 85% of the total market, there could be a little bit of wiggle room um, in terms of kind of a discrepancy that you would see between the shares getting returned and the shares going back out on loan and having the utilization stay at 100%. But here's the problem that we get into that the shorts have, and we've seen this happen every single time before we see a massive spike. Now, we saw the utilization supposedly really start to jack up here. Now, we do see an inflection point in AMC's cost to borrow. It's been downtrending since September, and we are now seeing it start to trend back to the upside. Here's the reason why cost to borrow is so important. It's typically a variable rate for these institutions who want to take out a loan of these shares. What that means is that if I were to take out uh, shares on loan, and let's say I'm paying 1%, and then the cost to borrow gets jacked up to 10%, well, the rate that I have to pay every day changes that is going to influence my decision whether or not i want to hold on to my short position now when you take a look at the previous increases in utilization over here we saw utilization start to spike and the cost to borrow on amc lagged a little bit so by the end of this week we're going to get a little bit of a better understanding of what that cost to borrow actually is 
in if it's stepping up. But even then, we are seeing a slight increase in AMC's cost to borrow. It might take some time for us to get up to those numbers, but we are headed in that right direction. Now, until we see that, I'm not really going to come out and confirm uh, or if this 100% utilization is correct or not. Um, but we are looking like we're heading in the right direction. Now, when we take a look at GameStops over here, we see utilization skyrocket. Again, the cost to borrow didn't move. And then it started to come up a little bit after. So cost to borrow seems to lag utilization by about a week or so, maybe even a little bit longer. But again, when we think about how these two stocks move together, well, the pressure is getting put on these shorts with AMC, we have that danger zone due to that average days on loan uh, right around 1950 to 2050. And when we talk about those danger zones, it's essentially looking at, well, if the average days on loan is significantly decreasing, it means that there's a lot of shares going out on loan in that time frame, meaning that there's a lot more shorting, hence the danger zone of that price level. But when we see the cost of borrow start to go up like this, we've seen it many, many times in the past. When we take a look at this right here, it started to go up in April. And then by the end of May, when we really started to see that significant run-up, we were at very high cost to borrow and high utilization. The shorts don't really want to hold on to these positions, especially if they're the technical shorts that we've been talking about a lot through these high cost to borrow increases. So the party's kind of over here for these shorts, or it's coming to an end in my mind uh, with these lending rates right here. If these start to go up, we're gonna see some shorts get out of their position and we're gonna see that buying pressure get reflected back into the stock. Now, when we take a look at Stonko Tracker, it is a monthly options expiration week this week. So we do have to kind of take a look at what's going on with the gamma potential. There's only 30,000 calls in the money right now for AMC and 248,000 out of the money. And when we come over to AMC's chart over here and we take a look at the options chain for this week, there's not a lot of heavy concentration of these at the money in the money strikes. Think about a gamma ramp like stair steps. What we are looking at here is we have an awesome, beautiful set of stairs. But the problem is, is that we're missing the first three or four steps of the stairs in order to even get on the actual stairwell. So we're not even really able to get on that uh, ramp yet. Um, but if we see the contracts start to pile up in these ranges, like we've seen with other stocks in the past, well, it could get pretty interesting going into the end of this week. But again, we have to look at what the overall market is going to be giving us in terms of what's going to happen with what happened at the closed door Fed meeting today. Any new uh, date, economic data coming out. I know we have the producer price index coming out um, later on this week. And then again, Wednesday, that's supposed to be kind of the big war day. So let's see what happens with that. So now let's get into some of these institutional purchases and sales of AMC. Now we do have Barclays over here, increasing their position by about 60% to a little over a million shares, which is a decent way, uh, decent sign to see. But Renaissance, when we type in Renaissance over here, led by Jim Simons, it's the most successful hedge fund of all time. They increased their uh, position in Q4 by 86.71%, and they're at about 4.68 million shares. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be thinking, well, where did this buying pressure come in? Well, we were having that big technical downtrend. They were most likely buying a lot of dips because... Well, one, their algorithms are looking at a lot of different things. Nobody knows how their, their algorithms really work. That's why Renaissance was the most successful hedge fund of all time. And when we come over here and take a look at their Wikipedia page, Renaissance Technologies is famed for the best track record on Wall Street, returning more than 66% annualized before fees, meaning they were returning 66% every single year for 30 years right here before they were paying out any fees. That is absolutely insane. Now, think about this right here. Even if Renaissance was loaning out these shares, well, in order to get those shares back, in, if they've already bought these shares, well, the selling pressure from these shares has most likely already come into the stock. So what's next? Well, potentially a recall if they want to get their shares back in order to sell them on the open market, or if they just decide that if they are lending shares, that the cost of borrow fee that they're, they're receiving right now is not worth the negative um, effects of lending out those shares on the effect of the stock price, which is where I think a lot of these institutions are at right now. That's another reason why we could have seen the utilization step up so high on AMC and GME and a lot of these other stocks, because a lot of these institutions looked at this and said, well, the cost of borrow is so low. There's a lot of shares that we're willing to lend. We have pretty big positions. Why are we letting these shares go out on loan to hurt our position? So we're kind of seeing a little bit of a switch here or a pivot in this institutional thinking. Now, I don't know how or when this is going to happen, um, but it's very possible that they're not only going to be not necessarily recalling the shares, um, but saying they're no longer going to lend a bunch of shares. 
but they could then go out and say, hey, we would like our shares back. We've lent them out. We were not receiving as much interest as we would have liked to, and we would like our shares back, forcing more buying volume back into the stock, which would be very bullish for us going forward. So that is going to wrap up this update on AMC. If you guys enjoyed the information and analysis that I provided for you in this video, make sure you go down and hit that like button. It costs you nothing to do it, but it really helps us out a whole lot in getting this information out to as many people who want to learn. And if you guys want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new video. So I hope you guys are having a great evening and I'll see you guys in the next video.